this, again, this electrical power comes out of my body. How do you describe that? Am I deluded? Probably, yes. Um, I, I mean, scientists are not impressed by anecdotes. Um, if you could get a scientist to measure the, I don't know, your galvanic skin response, you might get some sort of scientific interest in that. But it really, I mean, there are thousands of stories all over the world. People have ghost stories, people have stories of demonic possession, all different religions. Um, they're just not impressive, I'm afraid, to a scientist. And in particular, what I'd like to concentrate on is why, even if the, these experiences happen to you, why on earth would that make you believe in the book of Genesis, given that all the scientific evidence is against it, given that the Archbishop of Canterbury is against it, given that the Pope is against it, given that any respectable bishop is against it? Why would you go from having electrical tingling down your back Wasn't to saying tingling. that the book of Genesis has got to be true? Mm. Why tie it to the book of Genesis? All right. When I first read the Bible, the things that attracted me uh, or impressed me was the prophetic value of scripture as a man I'm not I wasn't as emotionally involved as say my wife would be have been because I'm at that stage I wasn't sort of in love with Jesus so I, I needed more sort of facts if you like and historically I know you probably would, could argue the points about this but there were prophecies in the Bible that actually were fulfilled. Like uh, what? Well, just talking about the, the birth, uh, for example, of Jesus in the book of Micah, uh, which is written apparently 500 years before Christ came, explaining that he'd be born in Ephratah, Bethlehem. And even Herod, who was definitely not a believer, used, uh, asked his wise men to find out where it was and how it was and when it would be that this Messiah would come because Herod actually... But, but surely you know that the Gospels were written in, in the way they were in order to fulfill those Old Testament prophecies. No, I know well, you would say that, Richard, well, but I, I don't believe That's what New it. Testament scholars no. say. I like you but in say, any I'm case, not it's nothing to do with Genesis. Hmm. I mean, you're talking about Micah now. Genesis... Well, I could mention loads of... What about the Babylonian exile, Jeremiah, the prophet? Look, that, that's not relevant to the book of Genesis, where you, you say, on the strength of the book of Genesis, you believe that the world is, what, only 6,000 years old, something like, like yes. that? Yeah, OK. Now, that, as you know, flies in the face of all the scientific evidence. It flies in the face of all the bishops, all the archbishops, the cardinals, pope. Not why all would of them, you, but so, yes, well, I, most of them. Yeah. Um, why would you put your money on the book of Genesis, nothing to do with Jeremiah, nothing to do with Micah, it's the book of Genesis. Why would you put your money on that when all the scientific evidence shows, and I mean not a little bit of evidence, but massive quantities of evidence show that the world is four and a half billion years old. It, I mean, it's absolutely open and shut case. Look at the science. You can't deny it if you would only look at the science. Okay, well, you asked me the question, why would I put my faith in Genesis? It is a difficult book, given um, that there is so much so-called evidence to the contrary that or what, we, what scientists are talking about as that, you know, the Earth is millions of years old, etc. But Jesus, and I do believe 100% that Jesus did walk this earth and did the things that he did, because uh, there are more manuscripts written about the, the accounts uh, of the yes, gospel. Yes, but we're not talking Jesus, we're talking Genesis now. Well, so. well, let me get there, Richard, please. Is that Jesus referred to Genesis, okay? And in there, he, he, he's not a liar, um, and he's a man that, or a being that I would trust. And he spoke about, in the beginning, you know, was Adam and Eve, for example. And he also talks about, he talks about in Colossians, that he, Jesus, is the one who created all things, okay? Hmm. So if, if Jesus is the one that I accept, then why should I deny Gen the Genesis account? Because otherwise I'm saying Jesus is a liar. Well, um, if you're tying Jesus to a belief that the world is only, is only 6,000 years old, you're not doing Jesus any favours because what you're in effect saying 
is that Jesus was anti-scientific, and I don't think Jesus would be very pleased about that. Um, no doubt he was ignorant of science because he lived at a time when he did when science was not, de not developed. But if Jesus I were you, I would not <coughs> tie Jesus, whom Jesus, you love. Jesus uh, was not ignorant. Well, um, uh, if you look at, and I was reading again this morning, some of the wisdom that he had, uh, we could do with today for sure. Well, I believe that may be true, but nevertheless, if I were you and you loved Jesus, I would not tie Jesus to the belief that the world is only 6,000 years old because you're tying Jesus to an error and you wouldn't wish to do that. There are many Christians who certainly disagree with me on the age of the earth. But let's just go back to the beginnings or the origins of man, which is definitely not where you are coming from as an evolutionist, that man has evolved over millions or billions of years. God says very clearly, uh, let us make man in our image. Therefore, there was a plural as well, and that's where um, Jesus comes into this as well. But that, that he has stated that he created all things. Okay. The book of Genesis the, stated that. Day one, that. day two, three, and you, goes through You those. said he stated that. The, the truth is the book of Genesis stated that. Yes. Yes, okay. But because the Lord Jesus Christ was there in the beginning as part of the Godhead, um, he could refer to it, and it's not... And I know, I know it would be hard for you to accept this, but, Richard, but Jesus was before he came as a man on the earth. He was before... Do, do, and you, therefore, do you know the evidence for the age of the earth? Do you, do, you, do you know why scientists believe the world is billions of years old? Yes, I hear the arguments, but uh, there are many people like myself, we're not super intelligent, but there are those that I said I would love you to, to get involved with, but I wanted this to be more of um, a sort of a getting to know each other and a trust, if you like, so that we could carry on with these discussions in, a, in an intellectual way, but me as a simple as a simple person, there, uh, we're looking at the description in the first chapter of Genesis on day one, and it uses the Hebrew word yom, which is a literal 24-hour days. Now, I know some people would say there's a, there's a gap there between Genesis 1 and uh, 2 and 3, and there possibly there could have been uh, this evolutionary process that God may have used. Now, we know that many of the bishops and archbishops, as you say, would believe in such a thing but in order to uh, entertain, if you like, or allow for the evolutionary theory to be expanded upon or, or accepted by other Christians. But just looking at it, uh, are you saying, well, no, of course, I, I know you're not saying, I believe that God created us and that we are intelligently designed and perfect. Well, I know you perfectly. believe it, but you don't have any reason to believe it. And you're, you're putting well, everything on this one book of Genesis. No, and you're, I, and you're accepting the, the book Bible. of Genesis because it's part of the Bible. And you mentioned Jeremiah and Micah. And because you see the Bible as a whole, but you know very well that the Bible is a collection of separate books which was, which was put together in a rather random way. And it could easily have been some other account, some other creation myth. The world is full of creation myths and the Jewish one happens to be um, the one that, that you believe because it got into the, into the Bible. But Australian Aboriginals have another creation myth and all the different African tribes have another one. Every tribe in the world has a creation myth and some of them are quite beautiful. The Jewish one's not at all bad. But why on earth would you believe this particular one just because it happens to have got into the canon, which is the Christian Bible? First of all, the very first prophecy is in, Gen uh, in Genesis, and there are many other, um, uh, the whole foundation, if you like, of the base, basis for our faith is the accounts of Abraham are in there. Um, and Abraham? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a Abraham, the one who nearly killed his son. Um, not a very edifying moral story, is it? It prefigures uh, really what the Lord did, uh, offered, his son. It does, doesn't it? It does. Yes. They're both as ugly as each other, both the stories. Well, if you, if you look at it initially like that uh, at first glance, yes, you might come up with that conclusion. But for me, Richard, when, when you look at the whole Bible and you look at particularly the life of Christ, he had such compassion. He healed the sick, he raised the dead. He wept with those that wept, uh, who were mourning. And Jesus, uh, the character of Jesus is not at all like I believe that you believe him to be. And he is a, a direct representation of God. 
Jesus seems to me to have been rather a good man. Um, the story that he gave his life for our sins uh, is a story that was made up later, uh, and it's a very unpleasant story indeed. I mean, the idea of the scapegoat, the idea... Well, Genesis, let me stop you there. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, I believe it is, actually talks about that there would be a Messiah that would actually uh, be bruised in the heel, you know, almost put to death, but raised. Uh, the, if you look at that, Bible scholars do, again, uh, say that that is the very first prophecy in the Bible Time and alluding again, to Christ. you come back to a biblical quotation as though I'm supposed to be impressed. I mean, why would you expect no, me I'm to be impressed? No, I'm not trying to impress you, mm. Richard. I'm just trying to give you, I, I'm happy to, for you to have your belief in evolution and long-term, you know, sort of understanding of how we evolved. Well, I would just ask you that, um, I'm not going to be rude to you. I'm asking you to consider my position so that we c you can see where the, the differences are yes. and perhaps open for discussion, I not just your on position. Not I just this your, one. your position comes from reading the Bible um, and I've tried to suggest to you that there's no particular reason why you should read the Bible rather than any other holy book which you could get from anywhere around the world. Now we started to talk about Jesus and Jesus' um, self-sacrifice which you pointed out mirrors that uh, the, the sacrifice of Abraham's um, son. Now, um, the idea that God could only forgive our sins by having his son tortured to death as a scapegoat is surely, from an objective point of view, a deeply unpleasant idea. If God wanted to forgive us our sins, why didn't he just forgive them? Why did he have to torture, have his son tortured? That's a very good question. Well, what's your answer? Genesis. <laughs>